I'm at an amazing building in the north of Amsterdam called Kraanspoor. Uh, and I'm here to get uh, uh, lessons on video blogging from Social Inc. Sander and Bart of Social Inc. are going to help me figure out some tips and tricks to make my vlog better. So uh, keep tuned and see how I'm improving as I learn. <laughs> Standing here in uh, Atheneum Bookstore with Thomas Frank, the author of What's the Matter with Kansas and his most recent book, Listen Liberals. Welcome, Thomas. How are you today, Tracy? So happy to have you at the How John Adams you? Institute. Yes. We'll be doing a really exciting event this evening. And so I wanted to talk to you beforehand, just briefly. You gave your book the title, Listen, Liberals. Listen up, liberal. Exclamation mark. Yeah. And my question to you is, <laughs> have they? Oh, no, certainly not. Not in America. They they are listening in other places, but not not in, not in uh, not back in the U.S. No. Why not? You say some very sensible things in the book. That's a good question. I would say because they uh, first of all they 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 thought they were going to win, right? Hillary yeah, Clinton. They were they were they were absolutely certain that there was nothing wrong and that they didn't need to listen. <laughs> there was nothing, you know, no problem. And then um, when she did lose, then they. Um, they decided it was because of foul play by the other side, you know, the Russians or whatever, the FBI. The Russians and, came uh, in and stole the election. Exactly. That was and so, a good and so, yeah. yeah. And so they they don't see that there's any problem now. Uh, you're starting to see some Democrats who are saying, "Look, this is a long term. This is a bigger problem than just the Russians." What would your prediction be now if you oh, had to hell, do a forecast? I, I, I hate doing predictions, but I would say. Uh, Trump is extremely unpopular, and that gives the Democrats a huge edge for the midterm elections. It's also traditionally the you know first midterm of a president's you know uh, first administration. He's his party is going to lose seats. This is just always the way this it goes. Always the way it is. However, yeah. they uh, never count the Democrats out when it comes to you know shooting themselves in the foot. You know <laughs> <laughs> they're really good at this, and uh, they manage to you know to 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 pluck. Uh, failure from the jaws of success again and again. They, they're very good at this. This is what they do. Uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough to help channel some of the Trump excitement with this video, uh, the Netherlands second video. Uh, it was a fantastic experience to do. It really was the best. It was wonderful. Uh, and <laughs> It's lovely now. I mean, uh, we thought the thing would do well in the Netherlands, but uh, no one knew that worldwide it would get 50 million views or even more on true views. Like millions and millions of views of this one video grabbing by the pony. I'm on my way to the Design Academy here in uh, Eindhoven. You see the uh, well-known uh, station building of Eindhoven behind me. Uh, I'm working with students who are studying in the direction of uh, leisure and well-being, who are working on projects commissioned by the province of Drenthe uh, to look at uh, aging, at health, at tourism, and the future of the province of Drenthe, and how they can um, catch those ideas and those themes in uh, new designs. I'm very curious what they're going to tell me. So my poverty, uh, my project is about poverty uh, in Drenthe because uh, a lot of uh, people are still living in poverty over there. Um, and uh, if you are poor, then you have not enough uh, money, of course, to buy all your food. So that's why then you go to the food bank. Um, at the food bank, they are uh, handing out packages of uh, um, food for a week, uh, but often there's not enough for uh, whole families. So that's why uh, I want to fill up the gaps with uh, bread because that's always there and always uh, available. On my way to the International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam, one of my favorite festivals in one of my favorite movie theaters, beautiful Tuschinski. And I'm going to see the movie I Am Not Your Negro by the American, uh, the black American director Raoul Peck. I'm really looking forward to it. The next generation will have access to these words uh, which changed my own life. I read Baldwin very early on um, as, a, as a teenager. 
It's uh, well, Wednesday Radio Day, and I'm here at the building of the NOS in Hilversum to do my weekly radio column on architecture and urban issues and related things. And today I'll be talking about the state of uh, the world of architecture after the crisis, uh, inspired by the architecture annual published by NIE Nultin uh, publishers in Rotterdam. I'm sitting here talking with Marie-José Jongerius, a photographer here in the Netherlands, whose new book is appearing in May, on May 27th, at the, film fe at the photo festival in Naarden. She has the main exhibition in the church in Naarden, beautiful location, and her book is about Los Angeles, where I come from. Show us the book, Marie-José. Here's the book. This is it, this is the book, Los Angeles Palms. What is your research about? The research and images are about the Washingtonia robusta. It's uh, the most iconic palm tree in Los Angeles. It's a really tall, long, skinny one, eh? That's the one. Uh, Los Angeles has almost 28 different kinds of palm trees, oh. but this specific one is the most iconic. You can see it in every uh, movie, in every documentary, all the TV shows. This tree is really more, even more iconic than uh, all the skyscrapers <laughs> of Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm uh, in the heart of Amsterdam in a, a space called the Playing Circle on the former flower market here in Amsterdam. And I'm here for the presentation of a new set of cutlery designed by Ben van Berkel, the famous architect of UN Studios, for the famous uh, household goods firm Alessi. So I'm going to talk to Ben in a moment. And I just wanted to show you this uh, lovely space and all these delightful preparations for uh, for breakfast and for the presentation of the new cutlery. Um, Why do we need new cutlery then? It's, it's uh, simply an object we hold every day in our hands, uh, several times in, uh, of the day. And, and I, I thought it would be quite interesting to rethink uh, the, the, the idea of how you hold a knife and a fork. Um, as you know, maybe um, the knife and the fork is only since a few centuries an object we hold True. Uh, and uh, use. Uh, you know, even in the 16th century, we uh, use only a spoon, I think, to eat with. And, and I think this idea of uh, how we work with this instrument and eat with the instrument and how we, how we look at them and how we uh, extend them from our own body, I always like to work with. Okay. So, I mean, the knife is maybe an extension of the teeth. Uh, the fork is an extension of the hand, and the spoons maybe an extension of the way how we used to eat with our with our bowl in our hands. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm here at a gallery Reflex in Amsterdam with the California artist Joel Morrison. Hello, Joel. Hello. Yeah. Hello. And his uh, uh, solo exhibition here at Reflex. And uh, one of the works you see behind me, and he has uh, quite a few works at the gallery. This is his one European show this year. The one, the one and the only this year. Yeah. The one and the yeah, only. Yeah, yeah. And I asked him what they're made of. Sometimes they look like, you know, the little papers that candies are wrapped in, but it's stainless steel. How do you produce this show? Well, it's it's a process of, of it's a five thousand year old process uh, that they it's called lost wax casting. It's how oh, they lost wax. Yeah, so yeah. it's made with a traditional mold, and then the mold is made uh, into wax, and then the wax is dipped in porcelain, uh -huh. and then the wax is melted out, and then liquid steel is poured in the porcelain, and then when it dries, you break it, and hopefully it all goes well. Oh, and then you polish it? And then you polish it. And the polishing is also quite a quite a big thing, uh, huh? Yeah. I, I would say some of these works have a thousand hours of polishing time in them. Good Lord. Yeah. Not by one person, but multiple people. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah and you told me that the, the people you work with on this final phase, mm. are, are they're not artists. They're people no. from the car industry or from some sort of technical industry. Yeah. Why is that? Well... They're the best. Now, though. But I have decided to just a few gebouwen laten zien en daar vertel ik een, een wat persoonlijk verhaal over, <coughs> omdat in de loop der uh, tientallen jaren dat ik toespraken hou, ik geleerd heb dat het persoonlijke verhaal toch eigenlijk meer beklijft dan wanneer je een soort uh, ja, geschiedenisles uh, zou 